Okay, let's go to the first hotspot, multiple sclerosis. First, the statistical perspective. We have a lot of data on what MS does to sexuality. Uh, that's because you have not one type of MS. You have different types, you have different questionnaires, you have different groups. So you have a lot of variety in the data. Here I give an overview of what they did for the book we wrote in Holland for sexuality in disease and physical impairment. Vermote is a, a Belgian psychiatrist. He is very much dealing with MS. And you see the numbers are from low to rather high. If you combine all the, the sexual disturbances, you get between 45 and 80 percent, uh, at least one disturbance in female and between 64 and 90 percent in male. Now you have in MS, you have, and in, in every disease, you have the direct effects of the disease, you have the indirect effects. Uh, for instance, if through a disease you get a sexual inc uh, a urinary incontinence, then through the urinary incontinence you can get sexual problems also because when you have urinary incontinence you can use urine also, lose urine also during sex. So that's a, an indirect uh, consequence. And then you have the sexual side effects of the treatment and you have the consequences for the relationship. We usually make that in four different steps. First on the sexual function direct, uh, in men you have a lot of problems with erection. It's rather directly related to the problems with the bladder because the plaques, they are in the same area in the spinal cord. Some men can have uh, erection during the REM sleep and not during sexual contact. And normally in sexology, we did in the past, we did a lot of uh, testing of the erection during sleep. And when during your sleep, you get a good erection, we say, then it is psychological. But in MS, we know that does not fit because they found that in the penis, in the dorsal nerves of the penis, there is indeed already damage in the man with MS. It's Claire Young, she is a neurologist and urologist in the uh, United States, and she does a lot of research in MS, both in men and in women. In women, part of them, they can get vaginal dryness and diminished sensations, but sometimes they have also periods when they have more intense sensations and then sometimes they can have a better or a more intense orgasm. Depends a little bit on what stage in the spinal cord the disease is and, and how it is with the inflammation. In female, uh, one of the first nerves which is damaged in the woman in MS is the dorsal nerve of the clitoris. And when that gets more and more damaged, it's getting more and more difficult to give the message from the clitoris to the center in the spinal cord in S2, S4, where the, the information is changed into orgasm or into the contractions, because the orgasm is what you finally get in your head. Now, if you get this MS, it's getting difficult to send all the stimulation in the clitoral area to the spinal cord. And that is where we are using more and more vibrators. If you cannot do it with your finger or penis or with your tongue, then maybe a vibrator can give still enough stimulation, much more and much stronger, in a way that you still can get an orgasm. That's where one of the situations in the rehab center where we give most frequently the advice, the vibrators. In men, it can be difficult also to have an orgasm because of lower genital sensitivity. Uh, and in 5% of the men, they get premature ejaculation as a result of the MS. And then it's, we expect that it's happening in the brain. It's the same what we see also in men. After stroke, we get a, quite a high amount of men who get premature ejaculation after stroke. And I saw also quite some men after traumatic brain injury or a whiplash accident that after that they had also premature ejaculation. You can get also autonomous nerve damage 
and then you can get, in men, you can get a retrograde ejaculation, that is, that uh, in the second stage of orgasm, when the sperm has to be sent outside, that it goes back into the bladder because the circular muscle between the prostate and the bladder doesn't close. One of the typical things which I saw in regularly in my patients is that when they have MS and they get an orgasm, that after orgasm they have for several hours, and in one of my patients even for several days, they will have less contractions in the muscles. And we know both from MS but also from spinal cord injury and men <coughs> with cerebral palsy, cerebral paresis, that the muscles, uh, when you get real excited or when you get orgasm, that your muscle tension goes down. And that is what, what you can use in, let's say, in the care of a lot of patients when they are very tense, if you allow them or maybe even advise them to get sexually excited, that they will get more relaxed and sleep better, etc., etc. That's one of what we call the health benefits of sexual expression. Now, in women, they can have female dyspareunia, pain, which can be a result of the high tension of the pelvic floor, but it can also be the hypersensitivity of the area ar around the clitoris, that it's so sensitive uh, that it gets painful. Sexual desire is, of course, decreasing in the people with multiple sclerosis because they have more depression, but sometimes it can increase. And then again, if it increases, it's mostly it's an effect of what's going on in the brains. In men with progressive forms of MS, they sometimes, or they quite regularly, have hypogonadotropic hypogonadism, and accordingly, they get a low testosterone and then the desire goes down because testosterone is important for your desire. Now, indirect effects, that's of course the fatigue. Uh, that in all the things, if you have n desire in diseases, mostly it means that there is absence of desire. It's not that you don't want, but you don't want yet to get into sexuality. And if your partner is playing the game well, you can go with your partner. That's different from, I don't like sex at all. So this, the absence of uh, sexual desire, that's of course what you find a lot in disease. Weakness, weakness of the muscles, that is where sometimes it can be useful to give a vibrator. If you are too tired to stimulate yourself or your partner, then you just you can keep a vibrator in your hand and you can stimulate yourself or your partner. <coughs> Muscle stiffness, that's what I explained, it can be reduced sometimes. Your walking can be different and your balance. Balance can be di difficult if you want to position well during intercourse and you don't have the strength to do that well. You can have the mood swings sometimes, like in uh, stroke also. And you can have cognitive changes and change sensitivity. That is difficult sometimes for the partner. If your buttocks or your breasts or your pieces of your body don't feel well, then sometimes you tell your partner, don't do that. And that can be very difficult between you and your partner because your partner not always touches you there to get sexually excited, but he can touch you there also because he likes to touch that. Sometimes the feeling of a buttock or a breast can be very nice for a partner, but sometimes you do it just to stimulate your partner. And that's difficult for some people to understand the difference. Pain can be important as well in multiple sclerosis also. And you can have your bowel or bladder problems. Now this is important for patients and it gets more important in those patients who need the stimulation uh, the good stimulation in oral sex to get sexually excited. Some people need oral sex. Now if you get uh, urinary incontinence during sex, that is a little bit a problem. If you need oral sex or if you, you absolutely need oral sex to get an orgasm. And it's even more difficult if you get fecal 
incontinence, uh, stool incontinence. And some of the patients, when they have fecal incontinence during oral sex, then it's finished completely. It's very damaging. So sometimes you get uh, people, they build up a good sexual encounter and then you get such kind of accident and then it's finished. Like one of my patients, he was uh, during a weekend, they put the children to the uh, grandparents and they had again, since, lo since several months, they were together on the beach and they wanted to have sex and during sex, then the, womb, the man was giving oral sex to his wife because she liked that so much. And then she got spasm of the legs and his head was caught between her legs and he couldn't get his head out of it. And he, the spasm was so strong that ah, he was crying like that, which is, you can imagine that after that they are very scared to restart into sexuality. That is part of the uh, traumatic things. And the heat sensitivity, of course, the Uthoff phenomena. Okay, the side effects of the treatment. We don't, up till now, we don't have real uh, proper treatment. So what we do with treatment is we try to slow the, the progression to reduce the rates, the relapse rates, and to prevent damage to the brains. And in fact, uh, up till now, it's only the interferon which can, ha can really help, but interferon can give depression and give low desire. I have a lot, uh, I'm dealing a lot with people with hemophilia, and they have also the interferon, and they have a lot of problems with depression and the low desire due to that. And then, of course, you have the treatment to diminish the side effects, the sexual side effects of medication. Uh, decreased erection and lubrication through anticholinergics, and especially uh, for the erection important, and uh, the antidepressants, as I explained to you before. And then the changing partnerships, uh, that the one who is the partner and not having the disease, mostly he or she has to do a lot of additional things. So the partner gets also very tired, uh, which can be more difficult to restart sexuality. And uh, what happens again is here, and you see the same in rheumatic diseases, asking too much and not asking sufficient. If you don't ask sufficient to your partner, you run the risk that the patient <coughs> is feeling guilty. If you ask too much, you run the risk that sex is gone. It's very, very difficult to find the proper balance in between. And what was very clearly uh, in MS, they did research and the same they did also in cancer, looking what happens with the relationships. And in this group, there were a lot of divorces. And the very painful thing to me was that the majority of divorces was where the man is the partner and the woman is the patient and the other way around you have much less divorces. That is one of the very clear differences between male and female. Female are very much better in the caring position than male. So it's a bit painful to, to read that. <coughs> 